Russia has taken the presidency of the UN Security Council despite Ukraine urging members to block the move. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov set the tone for what their presidency is going to look like. In a scathing attack uh, took on the West at the United Nations Security Council, Sergei Lavrov turned the tables on the West. Laying out the criminal misadventures of Washington, he went on to say that the shameful invasion of Iraq in 2003 was a violation of the UN Charter. The Russian minister cited historical examples of America's military aggression, including the nuclear bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. He also blamed the United States for a brutal coup in 2014 to install a Nazi Kyiv regime, which the Russians have often called as a justification for their war on Ukraine. He then rebuked the United States authorities for denying travel visas to Russian journalists to accompany him to New York for this particular UNSC session. But those allegations were met with an equal rebuttal. United States rebutted with citing the wrongful detention of Wall Street journalists on charges of espionage as a reason as to why they denied visas to Russian journalists for this trip. Russia further refused Israel's request to reschedule a key debate on the Palestine issue as well. That move too is being widely criticized. It's seen as Moscow's retaliation for Jerusalem's support to Ukraine amid the ongoing war. Now, Russia and United States have been at loggerheads for multiple issues over multiple decades. That rivalry is not new. The latest flashpoint, of course, is the Russian invasion of Ukraine. What exactly transpired at the UNSC yesterday? Take a look. Russia is a permanent member of the Security Council, which has... Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov chaired a meeting of the United Nations Security Council on Monday, which meant the representative of a country accused of violating the UN Charter and brutally invading its neighbor was given a platform to warn that the values of the world body were under threat. As during the Cold War, we have reached the dangerous, possibly even more dangerous, threshold. Russia is a permanent member of the Security Council, which has a rotating monthly presidency. Before Lavrov's remarks, Secretary General Antonio Guterres stated plainly that Moscow's invasion ran contrary to the United Nations mission. Russia's invasion of Ukraine, in violation of the United Nations Charter and International Law, is causing massive suffering and devastation to the country and its people and adding to the global economic dislocation triggered by the COVID-19 pandemic. And the U.S. envoy, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, went further. Our hypocritical convener today, Russia, invaded its neighbor, Ukraine, and struck at the heart of the U.N. Charter. Thomas Greenfield also accused Russia of violating international law by wrongfully detaining Americans, calling for the release of Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich and ex-Marine Paul Whelan. Whelan's sister, Elizabeth, was in the chamber on Monday. And I want Minister Lavrov to look into her eyes and see her suffering. I want you to see what it's like to miss your brother for four years. I'm calling on you right now to release Paul Whelan, Evan Gershkovich, immediately, to let Paul and Evan come home, and to cease this barbaric practice once and for all. Before the meeting, Elizabeth Whelan accused Russia of arbitrarily detaining Americans as bargaining chips with the U.S. This is not the work of a mature and responsible nation. It is the action of a terrorist state. In addition to the U.S., a string of Security Council members, including France and Britain, condemned Russia for its war on Ukraine. But Moscow was not without allies in the room. China, which has a no-limits partnership with Russia, welcomed Lavrov as chair of the meeting and sided with Russia in condemning Western sanctions. Unilateral sanctions that violate international law must be resisted. The United Nations is working to save an agreement that allows the safe export of Ukraine's grain from Black Sea ports that could expire on May 18th. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov chaired a meeting of the UN Security Council on Monday amidst deep divisions surfacing with the United Nations Secretary General right at that meeting. The odd neighborhood within the Security Council arose because Russia holds the rotating presidency of the Security Council for the month of April. Fundamental differences were to the fore immediately at this meeting. Russia of course sees itself as the voice of an alternative 
world order together with China against the influence of the US, NATO and what are broadly clubbed as Western powers. And those others see the Russian presidency itself as an instance of the failure of the UN system in which a supposed custodian of the world order has turned aggressor against a neighbor country. Seated right next to Lavrov, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said that the Russian invasion of Ukraine had brought massive suffering and devastation. We face unprecedented and interlocking crises, but the multilateral system is under greater strain than at any time since the creation of the United Nations. Tensions between major powers are at an historic high. So are the risks of conflict through misadventure or miscalculation. Russia's invasion of Ukraine in violation of the United Nations Charter and international law is causing massive suffering and devastation to the country and its people and adding to the global economic dislocation triggered by the COVID-19 pandemic. In some sense, Lavrov seemed to agree over the extent of the crisis. He said the world has become a more dangerous place now and that the dangerous threshold now matches and surpasses that of the Cold War. He said the situation has worsened because nobody is allowed to Western power and the Western minorities to speak for all of humankind. In order to halt the war that was... We heard what transpired at the UNSC, but how is Ukraine responding to all of this? To answer those questions, joining me on this broadcast is Member of Parliament from Ukraine, Voldemir Arev. Thank you so much for speaking with us here on uh, News 18. I want to ask you the kind of reaction that came to the fore from uh, Sergei Lavrov yesterday at UNSC. He, in fact, turned the tables on the West, including the United States, for their support, continued one at that over the last one year to Ukraine. Well, we understand that uh, Lavrov will not uh, be polite uh, towards Ukraine, but his words uh, uh, about what, what, what he would like to present on uh, the international um, uh, 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 such kind of institution like a, a Security Council, uh, uh, but finally it shows the only weakness uh, of Russian position. They cannot explain what's going on uh, and why uh, their, uh, their ongoing uh, more than one year aggression uh, is uh, still hurts Ukraine so much. And uh, the president of Russia, uh, uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, have been accused uh, by the International Criminal Court uh, with uh, as a suspended uh, criminal uh, uh, for uh, forced, move, forced movement of children from uh, Ukraine to Russia. So uh, uh, Russian position is very weak. And uh, in Ukraine, we still are uh, just uh, have a doubt that uh, uh, such states like uh, Russia, which uh, uh, reproduce the terror and spread the terror uh, uh, within the, for example, uh, private world company Wagner Group uh, uh, over Ukrainian territory, so why, why this country can uh, chair the, uh, the, uh, the United Nations Security Council. So it means that uh, United Nations uh, need a real uh, uh, serious reforms uh, to avoid that as well as uh, uh, five countries uh, that uh, uh, including Russia and China. Uh, where that uh, especially Russia and China that jeopardized the security uh, over the world uh, and uh, especially for neighbors. Why can they be uh, have a right to block uh, any decision of UN Security Con uh, Council making it useless? So we are uh, strongly in Ukraine uh, for moving out Russia as a state uh, supporting terrorism uh, and uh, as well as for uh, the reform in uh, of, of uh, United Nations, in the, in, in, especially in terms of Security Council, because uh, it's, uh, when Russia chairs it, it's not a matter of security. It's a matter of deepening crisis over the world. Right, Mr. Arev, like you mentioned that you had asked for the blocking of uh, the presidency of Russia of the UNSC. But do you think uh, that optics wise, uh, it doesn't really hurt uh, Russia or Vladimir Putin? Because even though the pressure has been on Russia, on Putin himself over the last one year from uh, various world powers, the fact that he still gets a seat at the table, he in fact is the chair of this UNSC session. Do you think that uh, 
solidifies the kind of uh, confidence that Putin has, which is why he continues the onslaught in Ukraine. Well, what we see is that the Putin has a confidence because of uh, the tryout of Beijing uh, to create uh, the second pole of the world. And we see that uh, China is uh, striving uh, to make uh, shares uh, of the world again. Uh, with their goal uh, to get a, to, to get a control over Taiwan, which, uh, which is uh, quite difficult uh, due to the uh, interior American law called uh, uh, Taiwan Relation Act, uh, Relation Act uh, that uh, uh, based on the uh, uh, guarantees uh, for uh, military security of uh, Taiwan uh, uh, after uh, the reforms of United Nations in 1977, when. China People Republic uh, replaced uh, uh, China Republic uh, of uh, that located in Taiwan. So uh, China now uh, supporting the Russian uh, aggression uh, in Ukraine as well as uh, uh, the interest of Beijing to disperse the uh, attention of United States. And I do believe that uh, uh, the uh, war of uh, uh, Russia against Ukraine is the only beginning and under the highest risk uh, situation in Israel and, uh, you know, the axis of evil, uh, which uh, recreates now in the shape of Russia, China, uh, Iran, uh, North Korea for a moment. Uh, this is the basement, uh, uh, the basic uh, for the perception of uh, Russian policy uh, in the world. But at the same time, uh, all those uh, countries, and I do believe that India uh, is uh, the uh, democratic states uh, with the democratic traditions will not be on the side of, of uh, authoritarian regimes uh, like Iran, North Korea, uh, or Russian Federation, uh, yes. uh, and as well as China. So I do believe that uh, India will uh, choose uh, the right uh, position because uh, all we are, including Ukraine, we are for prosperity and uh, the good cooperation in the world. But Russia, for the moment, would like to undermine and creating, uh, together with China, the second pole uh, back to the Cold War, uh, even worse traditions, yes. uh, to share the world for two parts. Yes, and as far as the Russian onslaught in itself is concerned, uh, Valdemir Arev, I want to ask you, uh, we've seen the entry of uh, the new battle tanks of Russia, the T-14 uh, Amarata, also in Ukraine. The onslaught continues there. So far, your country has managed to uh, keep Russia at bay in a way, so to say, that they haven't been able to uh, complete this invasion like they wanted to. But are we going to be seeing a counter-offensive from the Ukrainian side anytime soon? Well, uh, we have to prepare uh, the uh, counteroffensive, uh, and uh, I, I do believe that uh, the Ukrainian military uh, military action will be, as usual, in the last year, a very big and bad surprise, a big and bad surprise uh, for uh, Russian troops. Uh, you know that what is our advantage? Uh, uh, that uh, Ukrainian military commandments so they have uh, learned uh, the same books uh, with the Russian military commandments the time of the Soviet Union, but uh, Russian military commanders didn't change any strategy or tactics, uh, but Ukrainian commandment, uh, they create the counter measures and know how to build up the uh, right uh, uh, tactics and strategies uh, and to uh, to fight out R Russian. And uh, do you remember one year ago uh, uh, at uh, February 24th, uh, uh, the only lazy didn't tell that uh, Ukraine has maximum uh, uh, for 72 hours or 96 hours uh, to survive. Now is the second year of uh, resistance and uh, more than half of uh, territory captures by, by, captured by Russia on uh, uh, spring uh, 2022 yes. uh, were liberated. Yeah, so clearly this hasn't gone the way Vladimir Putin wanted it to. Ukraine has been fighting off, warding off the kind of invasion that has come to the fore from Russia. For the moment, I thank you, sir, for joining us here on this broadcast with your perspective.